This is Trekland HQ. Hold on just a sec. Let's let's light up the world just a little bit better. Boom. And let's frame a little better. Boom. All right. Now it's really Trekland HQ and we're live. And you know what? Hashtag texture not trivia in Pike Trek and a 4K time machine. Yeah. Today on Trekland Tuesdays Live with me, Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, coming at you right here from the heart of Trekland, right through Portal 47, and all things clarity, sanity, and the big picture in Star Trek. <laughs> Uh, wow, what days these are, what weeks these are. And of course, happy First Contact Day, everybody. I mean, that's going to date this episode for everyone watching months from now, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, happy First Contact Day. I've got so much to talk about today. The world of Star Trek is exploding in a good way. It's an amazing time. It's an amazing time. And not only that, but I'm two days away from going to go visit the Great Experiment Mission Chicago. The first new Read Pop convention under their long term license, not counting the 2016 Mission New York, but Mission Chicago to see what that's going to be all about. And I am promoting only no program time for me. So it'll be a different experience. Chicago will be different. And this week has been different. I've had two, two polar ends here of my old school fandom that have been activated this week. I'm going to tell you all about it. Now, of course, if you're new to Trekland Tuesdays Live, welcome, welcome. we got a great chat community going on, so jump in there. I will get to the chat after I get off my soapbox, and we take a slight midway break and look at the parent analytics, which are in transition, as we'll talk about. And then I'll hit the chat full bore, okay? So I'm not ignoring you. I'm especially not ignoring you guys and gals on Twitch. OK, just a reminder that if you're in the chat and you're in Facebook only, you're coming to us with Facebook, you'll only see the Facebook comments, which is the majority. But if you're on YouTube or Twitch, you will see everybody's comments. All righty. Uh, <laughs> wacky, wacky days. And yeah, I haul out the old Dr. Trek hashtag list here uh, for texture, not trivia, because First of all, looking backwards into the week, everyone's talking about the Strange New World uh, trailers. Everyone's still talking about Picard, which is a good thing. And the mystery of the Watcher and Laris, is, it, is she Iris the Cat? And wouldn't that be awesome? Or is that too obvious? All the questions. about It's, it's been a week to week to week explosion of comments and commentary and questions and punditry and yeah even the toxic tubers are trying to make hay out of it but they're not doing a good job so yay on you all and yay on fandom and yay on everybody across the way about stomping that out and just sticking with the fun what i've started calling the old bar buddy debates okay the good kind the good kind of critiquing and and excitement in star trek and there's been plenty of it and now we've been heaped on top of that with this deluge of, of Strange New World trailers, which I know are coming in advance of whatever news and trailers and peaks and live action are gonna come from Mission Chicago this weekend. So it's a prep for all of that. And what's been fun is watching all the reactions to that. And of course, we're gonna have an interaction between what we've known, what we've seen, the continuing, and we've talked about it here. I've just about decided that the original series, 60s shows that so many of us grew up with and that some folks today have a hard time watching, to be honest. But all of that, wherever you come from, is going to be relegated to what the Thermians saw in Galaxy Quest. This needs to be, I think we're going to have to have this be a show or a panel somewhere. I think we're going to have to say that as with the motion picture back in the news, and I'm going to get to that. As Admiral Kirk says in his foreword in Gene's novelization, I'm beginning to think that sometimes... Our missions in the five-year mission have been greatly dramatized. You know, a little bit like Mark Twain would talk about the Wild West being, you know, uh, glamorized and, and built up into something much bigger than it was. 
um, in all the dime store novels back in the day. I think we're going to have to say that the 60s TOS, as much as it pains me, and as much as the next generation were able to go back and refer to it visually in Relics, in Trials and Tribulations, in Inner Mirror Darkly, I think that's going to be relegated somehow to the dime store novel version of uh, the Kirk era. And not that I want to get off on that today, but I think that's happening because obviously now where Strange New Worlds is Art Deco is, there's a huge push to echo the original series, but it's not going to be the same thing. They've got materials and techniques. I mean, they could do it. They could do it. And it would be even cooler than Inner Mirror Darkly was. And you get down to the layer that we can see now and you'd see all the detail that you never got to see in the 60s SD, you know, the standard def looks. But that's not the way we've gone. That might have been more and more impossible to sustain even as every decade went by. It's going to be hard enough when we have real warp drive to explain to somebody what dilithium is because it was an element that was never discovered on the fifth moon of Jupiter. So there's all that in the future. Future fandom will be wrangling over that. But for right now, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of fun stuff going on. Now, you know, the, some of the, the headlines, people are all up in arms about Spock and T'Pring. Spoiler alert, but these are promos, okay? Um, how do we know that is T'Pring? How do we know Spock? Did, you know, again, kids, texture, not trivia. And here's the thing. We haven't even seen the entire series in its context yet. Now, what I did know, and here's where I'm coming in with part one of today's soapbox. Um, Mabenga was awesome. In fact, when they had the casting list of cast, but no character roles attached to individual actors, I saw that that uh, that African American actor, and thought, "Hmm, I'm looking at all the other roles, and thinking, wow, wouldn't it be funny if that was Mabenga?" And uh, and it turns out it was. Which then begs the question, six months ago, hmm, so he's here after Boyce. Boyce is gone. This is post-Cage. This is supposed to be 2259. So we see Mark Piper in the first, Dr. Piper, the first year of Kirk's mission with Where No Man's Gone Before, and then it's McCoy. And it was always very easy to say, well, Piper didn't stay long or didn't work out or whatever. So now we know, well, Mabinga went away and then came back as a subordinate to McCoy because he's made to be the, the Vulcan specialist. There's all kinds of exciting questions going on there. It, it just, to me, yeah, it was texture, not trivia. It was making the background rich. And now, as my good friend James Kerwin pointed out, Mabinga's got commander's stripes. Hmm. Unless we're misinterpreting early time. Again, this is all the fun of watching video when I had five seconds this week to look at these things. Now, here we go. In the weeds. If you are not an in-the-weeds Star Trek person, you may want to tune me out. Horrifically. But we're, our, our minds are already exploding with not that they got this wrong, but that, hmm, I'm already trying to figure out what's going to be the big storyline the last year of, 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 of Strange New Worlds. Or at the point where Pike hands off command to Kirk, at some point, how many seasons is Strange New World going to run? I mean, if Discovery can do four, they can surely do four. But how does, what's the manner of Mabinga's exit? Does he go to intern in that Vulcan ward as he's introduced by McCoy later on? He had two appearances in Next, Genera in, in Next Generation. He had two appearances in the original series, right? Uh, uh, Private Little War and the other one. But they were all after both Amok Time and Journey to Babel. It was like McCoy finds out there's this whole level of Vulcan medicine that's not in the database. What is up with that? It's not just Sarek. There's some seriously screwed up aspects of Vulcan society. I I've gotten into this over the year. Maybe that deserves a whole tome of itself. And McCoy just gives up and has Mabenga brought back. And is Mabenga still retaining higher rank? He sends for him and he agrees to come rejoin the ship and be there mainly for Spock and his friends. Or it was always awesome. But you know what? We never saw Mabenga in a long sleeve suit. He was always in his lab smock. 
He was always addressed as doctor. We, he, he was never addressed with a rank. McCoy was a lieutenant commander throughout the original series. And yes, doctors have brevet ranks and they have higher ranks that aren't really commensurate with like combat or command or sciences. Some of the field training. Um, they're a softer rank, but higher, especially if they're in the, in the command structure where they can override commanding officers and that kind of thing. But that's okay. Here's the best thing. What happened to Mabenga? Did he leave of his, was there a scandal and he was demoted in, for a doctor to be demoted in rank? Did he go out on some political scandal where he stuck up for his principles? Is this going to be a season seven Strange New World story? I'm the thing hasn't debuted yet. And maybe we're misinterpreting the stripes on doctors' uniforms differently than commands. I don't know. That sounds far fetched. I'm in the camp of something happened to his rank and later. We'll see. What's even more juicy is that Chapel appears to have a commander's rank too, unless again, there's some kind of a medical, haven't, I haven't gone, everybody else is talking about everything else. Here I am focused on Chapel and Mabenga. <laughs> Most of all, we know, and this is brewing too, just as much as Mabenga or more. We first meet Chapel in the original series when she comes aboard to chase her fiance, Roger Corby, who's disappeared, but there's signs of maybe he's been found. She is said to be, which is wacky because uh, naked time was, yeah, I know they were all out of order when they were shown, but her origin story is that she comes to the enterprise and doesn't know anyone yet. And it's just in her time aboard the enterprise that she develops her unrequited love for Spock and all of that. So is she part of the issue that sends Mabenga away later? That's going to be fascinating. Interesting. And does she have a relationship with Spock now that we weren't privy to when she came aboard to see Corby? Now, I know I know the doomsdayists out there are all worried about this. The level of savvy, and remember, Dayton is pump. Dayton Ward's pumping in background, and if he's not, uh, Dave Dave Mack is is chomping at the bit right behind him. There's lots of savvy people. I watched the Strange New Worlds writers panel a year ago, and it was the best thing ever because most of the panel below Henry Alonzo Myers, the uh, the showrunner and 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 Alex and Akiva, most of them were died in the wheel truck fans. And I'm going to say that after what we're starting to see now with Picard and some of the realignment, even in Discovery, that these kind of primary basic issues aren't going to be just made willy nilly. That there'll be something behind them and maybe something long term. My God, I hope so. I'm totally of faith that there will be. Which begs the question: What happened to Nabinga and what happened to Chapel? Could it be as innocuous as they went away? Because we definitely know, even if Chapel or Christine was never really addressed by rank, at best she was like nurse, like yeomans are addressed as yeoman without their rank being there. And you have to guess, are they an ensign? Are they a, a, a non-com in the TOS uniform structure? And by the way, if I've gone into the weeds on you here today, uh, too bad. <laughs> Hang in there, because if nothing else, Chapel was Commander Chapel by the time she was in Star Trek IV. But if you go back and look at the memos and things, she was clearly a lieutenant in the motion picture. All righty then. Uh, that was the intention. So what's going on with her? And was there a scandal with her or some kind of an issue, something controversial? So fine. Get excited for Strange New Worlds, this incredible array of characters. And Enar, an en engineer, Enar, you say Enar, I say Enar, uh, tomato, tomato. Uh, and Hemming, what a, what a, I, it's continuing the Lord X tradition of having these bland, waspy names on aliens. That will be interesting. But again, hey, I'm willing to sit for it. I'm willing to sit for a texture, not trivia. Just explain it. I'm sure you will. And if you don't do it now, you'll do it in two seasons by the time you realize what you did. But we'll eventually get there. We'll eventually have smooth heads explained and we'll have uh, English accents on French people explained. Even if it takes 30 years, we'll get there. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, okay, fine. I'll watch these early shows for a year or two. <laughs> but in the back of my mind, I'm waiting to see what happens to Chapel. 
And the Venga, poor Uhura, she's just a cadet here. She's got plenty of time to jump up those two ranks and get to lieutenant that we see. Um, and remember, she wasn't even the chief communications officer when Piper was the chief. The first year of Kirk's mission, Lieutenant Alden had the chair back there. So Lloyd Haynes, the great Lloyd Haynes, room 222. So we'll see. But that's kind of that's interesting. And I guess there's a be a it's cinematic. They're gonna have spacesuits that aren't gonna be silver lame. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. And overall, I'm just going to turn, take my beloved 60s trick and put it in this box. I'm not kicking it in the trash. I'm not kicking it out the back door. I'm putting it in this loving, decorative box on the shelf as the uh, the children's version of of real life, the public consumption model of what was delivered to the public during and soon after the Kirk's time. I mean, the Thermians can be confused, but I'm not going to be. And and we're going to have to leave it there and not go insanely, insanely insane. That's what it is. Now, that was all about going to my cannon smoothing, gap filling funness. That was my first, that was my first fandom explosion. Some people felt the need to run out and run write fan fiction. I felt the need to organize and explain the universe since they got it halfway down the field. I wanted to take it all the rest of the way down and score, at least in my own brain. <laughs> Head cannon, schmed cannon. We're going to do the whole school, whole, 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 um, wholesale. Thank you. We're going to do the whole thing. Who needs little pieces of headcanon when we have big pictures to fill in here? By God, there's missing pages in that tech manual. Did you know that? Um, who who goes back to those days wondering where the hell are the other missing pages from the tech manual? Yeah, I know. No, that's what animated. That's what got me excited. And it, stellar cartography, the same thing. You've heard me tell those stories. That was one activation. That was the mental side of fandom. Last night, I sat through. I sat through. That sounds horrendous. We got to go to the screening, the premiere event. Actually, was thrilled they had one of a movie that's debuting on streaming. It's a movie that's debuting on streaming. It's there right now on Paramount Plus. Yeah, I'm talking about the Motion Pictures Director's Edition 4K Upres, which is a saga on top of a saga on top of a saga. 21 years ago, and we were there talking about it last night about how we were there in the Paramount Theater lobby on the lot with the hoopla around the premiere of the completed Robert Wise vision for motion picture that wasn't being rushed to meet the deadlines so of the studio didn't lose millions of dollars in penalty fees with, with theater owners and distributors. They got the motion picture out on December 7th, <laughs> Pearl Harbor Day, should have seen that coming. And it was a huge success then. It was a huge success later on, finishing out Robert Wise's vision so yeah, so uh, David Fine, Mike Medicino, uh, Darren Doctorman, the the three man guru <laughs> triad, splitting this up and getting it done. Twenty one years ago was amazing, but they had to limit the future and just get the shots done in standard, basically standard def, knowing that the HD revolution was coming down the line, knowing just like trying to Blu-ray DS9 and Voyager that they were boxed in and it was going to be another huge quantum leap of effort. To get on and as david told me last night the technology has caught up with the process where you don't need a team of a million people and a million bucks to do it well a lot of money still but the three of them basically with help and they've been cataloging it on uh, social media especially darren uh they have been chronicling their adventure the last year or two and keeping everybody up to pace now you could say okay fine it's another iteration it's another this it's another that friends I had sitting in a theater in a big screen experience. So I hope you get to watch this on as big a TV as you can find, yours or friends. And if you get the chance to see it in a theater at some point and make sure it's the new director's edition 4K, yeah, the picture is crisper and all of that and the audio is amazing. But there were moments there was at least one moment, tiny detail that I saw for the first time. I always love when I can see something new. That's That reminds you how rich and how layered Star Trek is, that you're still always seeing something new. There were audio moments 
that I saw something new. There was a canon moment about the size of the crew that my ears perked up. Yeah, it was background bridge chatter. But then I had to ask, and Mike told me, Mike Matasito told me, yes, it had always been there, but it was buried. And they this time on the remix that they did, and not even over 2021, they were able to bring and rearrange some bits to even heighten the, the drama and the build and discoveries they were making about the film all along. It was there's some choices they made with titles that kind of are a little bit of a jazz and a jizz there. But um, I'm just going to say this. Yeah, the third act is still a little slower, but this is a quantum leap above the experience you had in 2001. So this is technically a review. And then I'm going to review the experience last night. I'm going to end this all by saying the climactic, what I'll call the V'ger bowl scene. Maybe it was because I was watching it on big screen. And I saw it six times on big screen in 1979. And a few times since then at festivals. Including the infamous pink screening on original film about four or five years ago. <laughs> that was a huge disappointment. Yeah, it was the original film. It wasn't digital. And boy, was it pink. Uh, we called it Star Trek The Motion Pinkness. But last night... The colors, the richness, yes, the sharpness and clarity. It wasn't, it wasn't 4K porn. You're watching it. Occasionally, I would realize how insanely good the picture looked. It was more a factor of the mix of the soundtrack, the audio sound effects and voice tracks, and the lighting, the way it had been, it had been remastered for color. Um, there's all technical process behind that. And there was a progression and a logic and some of the edits and cuts made, made just things make more sense. If you saw the doomsday machine on the remastered edition that Dave Rossi and Mike and Denise oversaw, you suddenly saw your beloved doomsday machine machine as much as you love the sixties effects. and know that that was the most ambitious optical effects episode of the entire original series. 102 effect shots, which is insane for them. Having a CGI'd doomsday machine that actually choreographed with the constellation and the Enterprise, the battle, chore the dialogue lines made sense. It was actually a choreographed battle, a two way and a three way battle that finally visually made sense. And you went, oh, this was actually an improvement as much as your diehard heart wants. That's what I had last night with the motion picture and especially even the V'ger scene, the flow, the dynamic, the point of view, the look, the coloring, the, the, the lighting, the shifts, the evolution as the scene went along was amazing. Friends and neighbors. I felt like I saw the V'ger climax, the V'ger temple it's called the V'ger bowl scene. I felt like I saw it for the first time last night. Uh, you can quote me on that guy, Paramount. <laughs> I felt like I saw the ending for the first time last night. It was that. Now, I was in a big theater. And yes, there were fans around me, but there was nary. I mean, I never I never felt like even with friends next to me, I felt like not even whispering. I think once I whispered one moment. A lot of the things that come across as funny still, still work as funny. So much of it still works just fine. The things you want to make a little fun of. You still feel like making a little fun of them then. Kirk rushing in to take over the transporter from Rand and Scotty when they had the accident. Oops, spoilers. Um, it's like, excuse me? We've got the transporter chief and the chief engineer here, and you're going to be the hero? It's fine. You can still laugh about that. McCoy's entrance. The scene just above it before as the other crewmen come in ahead of him. Felt like a whole different scene. Um. Yeah, I can't wait to see what everybody's saying in the chat today. Uh, I'm just gushing. Can you tell I'm gushing? And as an experience last night, I'd forgotten what these were like. We've had two years of pandemic. They did a good bit. Um, everybody from people who worked on the film, although I didn't get to talk to very many of them, to, uh, to the guys working on the show this time and 21 years ago, to all so many folks in the Star Trek professional community that I didn't see. And if you're on anybody's social today, you're seeing tons of pictures up. I haven't put any of mine up. I did one roll around pano when we were sitting in seats. You couldn't see much. 
you see John Champion's face real big next to me, but um, yeah, it was amazing. But everybody from from <laughs> Brian Fuller to uh, to half of the art staff, you know, the Akutas and Doug and and, uh, and Tim Earls and and oh no, see, I'm going to start listing people and I'm going to forget people. But I we selfied all night last night in the lobby before going in. So it's like it was a multiple thing. People I hadn't seen in three years, people I hadn't seen in five or ten years, and it was awesome to see them. Carrie O'Quinn, who's going to be a big part of the Con of Wrath when we get it done, um, walked in with him. It was great to see him again from Starlog. So, uh, so many folks, so many fo um, Sandy and Tim from OldStarTrek.com and Dave. I mean, and then what was awesome was they had a party afterwards at Scum and Villainy Cantina. Uh, it was open to anybody, free drinks, uh, some some bar food coming out. Uh, and it was amazing. And the conversations went on and on and on. Darren had seen fit to invite uh, Dave Blass. And uh, from from the Picard, Ballyhood from Picard's art department, season two, and yet to be seen season three. Um, so there were a few new faces, totally under the carpet, because no one knew to do that, but that was great. And so many folks from the generations over. And I saw today where uh, Darren, Dr. Man, posted a great tribute to all the folks that have been lost just since the 20, the 2001 original director's edition, which of course, again, is trying to fulfill Robert Wise's vision for the movie that was so rushed. They didn't get to do the editing. They didn't get to do all the layers of sound effects and just the atmospheric, the, the bridge felt so dead. The bridge felt so dark. The visual effects felt so long because they hadn't had time to, it was like, get that sucker done and slap it in there and show it to people. We just we're just happy to have the damn effect that that effect element done, much less have it edited to the right, you know, the trims on each end, having a flow. And that's why so much. And that was what was done so to such great effect in 2001 with the first go round of the lower res director's edition. Uh, just so many things against them. And since then, we've had 4K come along. So we got to skip a generation and. Hearing the saga of all three of the guys working on their areas and the aspirations they wanted, I hope you're able to tune in, read interviews, read. I didn't try to do any of that myself last night. We're going to look at doing something down the line, hopefully on, on with the Trek files or with um, just some special stuff. <laughs> because the info is so, certainly out there. And it talk about people with a saga. It was a saga to get the first one made. It's been a 20-year saga to get this one done. Had nothing to do, a little bit to do with the 40th anniversary in 2019, but a lot to do with the state of technology, the pandemic scaring a studio that had nothing new to show for two years, launching a new platform, Paramount+. Plus. So a lot of good things happen. A lot of good things happen. And if you haven't had a chance to watch it, if you're getting Paramount+, Plus already, it's right there. I've been hearing from the Canadians. It's not on their Paramount Plus. What's what's up with that? I am so sorry. Hopefully that'll be remedied soon. I don't know what the status is in the rest of the world, gang. And I'm sure I'll hear everybody's chats here in a minute. But I'm going to say that of all the times I've sat through, yeah, even 20 years ago when I saw the remaster, not the remaster, the, the director's edition edit with a lot of technical tweaking, um, this was not just taking that and making it sharper. There were some new choices made and even some discoveries all in service of the storytelling. Again, it's, it's not about 4k porn, <laughs> the beauty, you know, the CGI for the CGI of it. It wasn't about that at all. Um, yeah. Seeing little moments I did most of all, most of all, they play the overture. And it's not a black screen. It's just a star field. You actually hear the experience from 1979. And that's what set me up for the whole rest of the evening. Sitting there in the dark with the overture playing. I, I, it was my own time machine. It was a 4K time machine. It was 1979. What's a little inflation? I wish Jimmy Carter was president. And it puts you back in the mood. And I am, I am a kid again, and I'm watching this thing that I've been waiting. I've only been waiting five or six years for it. Some people have been waiting 10 years. And any person watching it now, it's no one's fault. You can't help but be there. 
but there was there was not a you could have heard a pin drop during the famous flyby that so much of later fandom and movie critics love to make fun of but if you were there in that seat in 1979 and i'm gonna dare saying most of the folks in that theater last night in 2022 most of them totally got it. It was completely a love affair to the fans to show off, look, we finally got the money to give you the story we wanted to give you. I felt that way with just the pan over the Klingon battle cruisers. I was there from the beginning. The Enterprise was just the cherry on top. But the whole experience last night, I got to be a kid again. I got to be a kid again and stare at those models. I got to be a kid again and watch everybody. I got to cheer for your people. I got to um, <laughs> I got to tear up when McCoy beamed in um, the way I probably did back then. And just to know that it was a beautiful scene of the best rendering of the sequence of the whole movie that I'd ever seen before. It really was that strong. And if you're watching it on even a big plasma in your home, I hope half of this comes through. I hope... A chunk of this comes through. Dave was talking about last night about how even if you could sit in a theater, so many theaters aren't set up to actually your home screen may be better established to get you the detail than a lot of movie theaters still. So take heart on that. Take heart on that. I hope I have not raised the bar so high on expectations here that you're disappointed. I, I was sitting in a theater watching it on the huge Paramount Theater screen there um, in the best atmosphere of all. But it really was, even with the reunion going on outside and seeing so many folks post-pandemic, it was um, it was the movie experience that I haven't thought of in those terms. And so I'd go see a movie, but a theatrical experience of sitting in a huge theater with a huge screen with a wonderful sound system and having, you know, having left, right, back, forth speakers, um, having it put you in the mood to be there. And not only in the mood to be aboard that ship in that year, but even to be back in those theaters in 1979, where I was in life, with all of life ahead of me, scary and unfulfilled, and having all of Star Trek ahead of me, having no clue where it would go. But for this moment, knowing this, even with some of the disappointments, just being amazed and drawn along, and appreciating last night, Things to a degree that I could never have appreciated them in 1979 or 1992 at the film festival where they ran all the movies or anything since, including the watch along that Ali and I did just a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, um, you know, watching on my iPad. It's it's not quite the same. At least get as big a screen as you can get to watch this sucker the first time. It is so much more. It's so much warmer. The color palette pops. It does not look like a blob of blue-gray darkness. You actually see a tone range. You actually see the palette come to life. And the sharpness helps that, the tweaking. Um, okay, I'm going to stop going on and on about it. This little kid <laughs> who felt like he got into fandom late, I missed the first you know, wave of five or six years. So I was a, I was a rerun kid. I had to hear about all the stories secondhand or read about them but still i was along for the ride and um the the phase two ride of fandom what are we up to now phase 47 uh yeah it was amazing i hope you have as good as i hope just viscerally watching it as a movie you have as good an experience uh, as i did and i haven't blown it up totally for you let's see what you think if anybody's watched it already it'll be fun to see your comments here as well as your comments about my retcon madness, my texture not trivia madness with McCoy, with McCoy, <laughs> Mabenga, and Chapel on Strange New Worlds. And of course, we can talk about Picard. What's up with that? Um, the cat, the whole Isis, the cat. I thought I was original three weeks ago when I when I first heard Supervisor and he saw her, saw her standing there. But now apparently it's become a big widespread thing and that's fine. So, um, wow. Lot to talk about. I should have focused on one of these topics or the other, but I double whammyed you this week because we're going to Chicago. And I'm sure next week we will have a ton more revelations and a ton more things to talk about. Again, you can read about news headlines everywhere. I'm trying to bring you a personal touch here. 
a personal touch and something that you're not seeing everywhere all over the place. Hopefully it's it's not the same old, same old you're getting around the interwebs. Because here's something you're not getting around the interwebs as we shut down here and hit our midway break. Just a couple things to leave with you, okay? Coming up, if you're headed for Trek Vegas, a day ahead, Geek Nation Tours and I are leading our Valley of Fire tour at the Kirk Memorial Tour. It's Wednesday, August 22nd. Go to geeknationtours.com. You can read about it. It's a one day, and we do start early in the morning, so we get back at two. We're not going to die of heat stroke. We've done this several times, okay? And then I am talking about this. I still don't have the page ready for you, but I want it to be on your radar. If you are coming to Trek Vegas the weekend before in L.A., and actually just a few days before the one day in Valley of Fire, but here in L.A., the weekend before, we're closing out Gene's centennial year with the trip I wanted to do last year, and we couldn't because of Omicron. Our Great Birds Origins Tour, it's the GR Life Tour, two days around L.A. going to his life places, his workplaces, his married family places. Going with that, Rod will be with us for part of the time. Who knows who other guests we may wrangle in with us. It'll be bust. It'll be two days. The Hollywood Roosevelt is our hotel, and I've already got a great rate, great, better than the normal tourist promo rate there. So for now, if you're really interested, get in touch with me. I promise We've been so slammed here with everything coming up now in Chicago at the last minute, but I promise I'll have this up in time. If you save the date, we will get you there. All right? That's, <laughs> that's the Great Birds Tour. Otherwise, I do want to thank all of our Patreon folks, our TTLers, okay? Hey, so that's, that's Diana Hopkins and Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, and marie Siegel, Keith Rombach, Justin Porteous, Nathaniel Robinson, and Blaze K., and our live wires, Rusty Harold, Halbert Gunn Johnson, Robert McLean, Alan Hoensey, J.R. Poole, Byron Bailey, Steve Gregory, Gay Clevin Lindstrom, and Casey Shafsky. If you want to join in, help out, I have a very modest, a very simple Patreon, patreon.com slash Trekland Live. It's five bucks, ten bucks a month for a shout out. Ten dollars is some bonus archival interviews from early Portal 47. Yes, I know. I am months behind on getting those to everybody. They're there. We're getting the infrastructure set up, but it is happening and we'll get everybody, we'll get everybody backfilled. All right. <laughs> also, the Trek Files is up as usual Tuesday. Um, we went a little feminist this week, and that's good, or sisterhood, as I should say. A memo on sisterhood from the great Dorothy Fontana from the TNG days to Gene as Next Gen was being set up. And who better than Fran Taylor? from Sci-Fi Sisters. I don't usually go for other podcast hosts as my guest, <clears throat> but Fran was one I knew uniquely knew, fandom and the 60s and perspective. And so she, I was lo lovely to have her with me again to talk about this memo from Dorothy Fontana from uh, 1986. So check out the Trek Files, of course, on Facebook where our documents are or wherever your podcasts are. That's great. And podcast.roddenberry.com. There's been a shift in things. The Mission Log Empire is expanding. Uh, there are other shows, too. There's a really funny Sci-Fi 5 out today I just saw. You should go check that out, too. So glad to be with you every week on the Trek Files. Um, yes, Life Support Live is done for now, but you can still go back and see, see the archive. Otherwise, it's Larry Nimichuk on Twitter. Where you're watching me right now, Larry Nimichuk's Trekland on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. Lovely to have you on Instagram. A lot of fun stuff. is. In fact, I just put a fun couple of things up on my reels. Check it out. And Portal47.net is like a minicon all year long. If you enjoy deep diving with us a little bit here on Tuesdays, it's so much more on Tuesdays. Um, lots of things in the work. I'm excited about some of the uh, guests that we're able to start having now for Portal. That's Again, Star Trek is exploding, expanding the new, the old with the new, making those connections. And this community, silver lining out of the pandemic, we've been virtual for five, six years, but both in Portal 47 and then in live streaming here. But the rest of the world is catching up to the secret, and it's, a, it's an amazing time. It really is. And now it's going to be amazing to see what Mission Chicago brings. So... If you're with us live, hang on. If you are watching later right now on YouTube, you should try to join us live some week. 
other than that though folks um for right now and hang with me if you're live but for those going away i do want to say stay healthy we're not out of the woods yet totally do all the things that they ask please stay woke check your sources and then you're able to trust the information coming at you is it real or not <laughs> i mean trek well everybody All righty. Boy, I can't wait to see what I've churned up today. Did I go too polar opposite? I hope I, I was cramming. I was going to I was gonna talk about the Mabenga Chapel, and then last night was just too incredible an, an evening. It's like a class reunion. I didn't want it to end. They almost, I mean, we didn't shut down the uh, scum and villainy last night, but we were close to it. Now, here's the thing. This is the time you regulars know when we usually look at the uh, parrot analytics. But I had been suspecting, as there had been no update since March 11th, that maybe they are, they are stopping after the four or five years we've been watching, nearly five years, they are ending their weekly top 10 ranks in the States. Uh, and it's been three weeks now, and there's no... There is no uh, top 10. I think, and I haven't had a, a definite confirmation of that, but apparently so. Apparently they have ended those top 10 ranks that we looked at every week. Now, what's interesting is I think I overlooked them in the middle of our 50th anniversary hoopla or ending life support with Ollie. Somewhere in there, I never gave the actual last week that they offered because I would have remembered that week as they use, and they still use this. They're just not posting it publicly in this top 10 form. They're still doing the research, collecting their average demand expressions as their baseline um, uh, metric. And they build up from that in the States, in dozens of markets around the world, in countries, and looking at digital only, which is what Parent Analytics was formed to do, was give people a handle on popularity of all these digital series that were outside the old terrestrial networks broadcasting we've got commercials and so nielsen is going to give us ratings to set ad rates it's all moot as it's been for years now and the market on that is shifting but parrot's been there for a while it's at least an apples to apples thing we can talk about and the last week that i never shared with you all it's three weeks old but i'm going to do it because for once of the digital onlys and i know we didn't talk about this because i would have remembered this that week, ending March 11th, so the first, first week of Picard, first full week of Picard, Picard was number two in the old top tens. Mandalorian was first at 37 times more popular than the average show in the middle of their spectrum. Picard was number two at 33 and a half times more popular than the average show. I can't believe I didn't see that. I can't believe I didn't share that with you. Even as this goes away and we'll still be looking at what the parrots are giving us, it's not this top 10 format. I'm deciding that because a Star Trek show scored so highly, it, it broke. <laughs> Parrot just had a meltdown and their people said, oh my God, Star Trek's outlasting uh, all the Star Wars and everything else and the Marvels. So we have to stop this. Did it freak out? The week-to-week -week demographers? I don't know. But I think it's funny that the last week Parrot did this. Picard was number two. Uh, it like quadrupled in its demand from the week before. It's not even worth it to go back through the other. I mean, you know, Stranger Things was number three down at, at 30, just behind, just behind. There was a clump. And then Boba Fett and all that was below. So here's a Star Trek above Boba Fett, above a Star Wars. Yay. Um, but I just wanted to close with that because... This may well be the last time we have the week to weeks. However, as some of you know, we've been looking at if um, if uh, if I didn't uh, have that, we've got the week to weeks to look at. Picard, Picard skyrocketed um, this week. You can still get data from show to show to show. So over the trending, they're not giving you specific week to weeks. But over trend times, over 30 days, Picard is 30 times, 30.6 times more popular. You just saw it three weeks ago, specifically at 33. So 
There you go. Still in the outstanding category that they call, which is their upper two and a fourth percent, 2.4 percent. It's 30.6 times more popular than the average show. So if they were doing top tens, it would be in the top 10. I know it. The trend line is up and high and staying pretty much standard. It is 99.3% more popular than anything else in the actor adventure game in the States over the last 30 days. The 60 day trend line has peaked up and has uh, bopped around pretty good. What's interesting is we're still waiting on strange new worlds. We're getting all this flood of promotional material before the explosion. Potentially there is a panel. So, you know, there'll be lots of stuff coming out of Mission Chicago. If you're not there, just keep your Star Trek channels open because it'll be lots of, it'll be like Comic-Con and Trek Vegas only now. First contact day seems a little subdued. They're saving it all for Saturday for Mission Chicago. Um, but Strange New Worlds is already 6.6 uh, .6 times more popular than the average show. And it's in the good category, which is the upper... 8.6% of all shows. Average is in the middle two-thirds. Average is the middle 64% of all programs. And below average is the bottom 22. So just so you know, <laughs> Strange New Worlds hasn't aired yet, but on the strength of its buzz and promo and early reviews, uh, it's in the upper 8.6% right now. The trend line, can I show you this? The trend line for Strange New Worlds is there. Can you can you catch that? Oh, stop it. Boom. You get the idea. Okay. <laughs> if I I know I should have set this up and used my yeah. It is 85.6% more popular. 85.6% more popular than everything else in the action adventure genre. So they've got it lumped in with with Picard. Prodigy, by the way, which is fading, it's not hot, but how many kids are just finding it and enjoying it? It is still 12.5 times more popular than the average show. It's in Parrot's outstanding category in the upper 2.5%. And even though their trend line is down, it's not plummeting. Over 30 days from 30 days ago, uh, it's down 32%. But it's still 93% more popular than um, anything else in action adventure genre. Again, all in the same, all but Discovery are in the same genre category. Not lumped out for, not singled out for live action versus animation even. So Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek. Uh, just to say Discovery is in the drama genre, 99.7% as popular. It's at 23 times more popular than the average outstanding. It's in the outstanding. It's 60 day trend line is down just because they finished the season, I would think. But its 30-day change in demand is up 33%. So, I mean, all the Star Treks are being very healthy in the parent analytics system. And even though we won't get top 10 ranks apparently now going forward, um, they're all being very healthy. And Parrot showed a huge, a huge jump up for Picard there after it opened that um, I didn't see. Now, it's going to be interesting to watch the global reports coming in also. And the situation in in um, Canada, where they have the one-off places, and some of them are terrestrial with ratings, so it will be interesting to see. So I haven't mentioned Picard here. We, I, I, um, Picard's having its own moment here. I just thought that this unleashing this flood of promos for Strange New Worlds has got so many tongues wagging, as we saw. Show hasn't aired yet, and it's already showing up on the parrot radar. And uh, yeah, let's see what you all have to say. Let's hit. I'm back scrolling. If you're new to Tuesday's Live, I'm probably the only one in the universe that does this. I am back scrolling to the start of the chat. And hopefully I will catch up with everybody as we get along here. So it's so good to see everybody. I'm, um, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Two days until we see. Let's hope. Let's hope everything goes according to Hoyle. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, back at you, Mark. Happy first contact day. Absolutely. Um, oh, I don't look 4K. <laughs> Only 400. Why, thanks for the compliment, Christoph. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and hey, how long has this been a drama, Cairo? Yeah, 
it'll be good to see you in Chicago too. I'll be more footloose and fancy free with less responsibility than I have in ages because this all came together so late. So we'll see. We'll see. We have news to announce in Chicago. Terrace and I, Terrace of Geek Nation Tours and I have news to announce in Chicago, which kind of tells you what it's going to be. Can I just say that after two years of being locked up, everybody, uh, virally locked up and uh, restricted to our Zoom boxes, this next coming year is going to be one of the touriest years ever. Just saying that. You know of two of them already. Uh, one's coming and one I've mentioned next time around, uh, next year around the cruise dates here in L.A. So can't wait to get all that going. I'm just going to say, if you're coming to L.A. for the tour in February, you might allow an extra day or two one side or the other of your tour departure, okay? Just saying. Just saying. Uh, <clears throat> okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, I, I know I'm still not even, I know I'm not even going to get to tourist. I, my first time in Chicago outside of O'Hare, I had hoped to go make my Bob Newhart show. <laughs> and I know, I know where they are. There are Bob Newhart show fans that have his house and apartment and workplace and his commuter train all mapped out. But I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to have time to do that. So I'll have to do that when I've got, um, when I have company with me. Longer stay. This is going to be a crazy weekend. Nobody knows the layout. Even people that live in Chicago don't know how this is going to play out. And we'll just see. Everybody's trying to do their own thing. I don't know how coordinated everybody is. The, the show will be put together, I hope. I'm talking about what everybody's doing on their own time in the evenings. It'll be wacky and it sure won't be same old Vegas and Vegas this year won't be same old Vegas. So it's going to be a really interesting big con year. And I'm glad I'm there to witness it all firsthand. And I'll let you all know, I'll do some live streams for sure. And uh, I'll talk about it next week too. Okay. And of course it did, Steve. Of course, the trailer for Star Trek Season 3 just dropped with all of its revelations. I know maybe the biggest revelation of all, so I don't know if it's in there or what. Uh, oh, it is. Okay. Thank you, Paramount, for doing this just as I went live. I'm betting somebody will tell me in the chat what I haven't known because I've been here talking about ancient events like last night and last week. Mm-hmm. 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 Okie dokie. Okay. Okay. Uh, how far did they go with that, Zaheer? I'm not saying anything unless I see you all tell me. Because <laughs> I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I finally got to watch the Strange New Worlds trailer last night. Oh, my goodness. Uh, hello from Germany, Captain. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, Rusty. Um, long story. We were going to have a panel, and then our person changed. And it was after the fan deadline happened. And uh, Yeah. But I'm not going to go there. I'm looking at this as an opportunity to, uh, to be uh, as unencumbered as I've ever been and being able to plan things on the fly. So if you are going to Chicago, um, I'm going to put a post in Truckland. I know we'll have a live dive for some of the Portales who are there who never get to come to Vegas or anywhere else where I am. I'm already looking forward to having a Mission Chicago live dive with our Portal 47ers. But as far as having something even broader or maybe to partner with people, uh, I have not had a chance to do any of that yet because everything is so diffuse. Because we've been, they stuck a motion picture screening and a happy, and a first contact day in the middle of all this stuff coming together at the last minute. So there we go. There we go. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, no, Prodigy has not started up again and they haven't announced the date. It'll be sometime the last half of season one <laughs> will be sometime later this year is basically where we are. Uh, these are all questions. I hadn't even seen it yet. So I'm going by what you guys have seen or talking about. I checked for headlines and there we go. 
Uh, and good to see you to us from Portugal, Sofia. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, well, uh, Christoph, this will be amazing. <laughs> no, wait, the Tel Kelvin timeline happened because we're getting a movie in a year and a half, supposedly. Hmm. Or are they just playing straight Kirk? Are they playing prime everybody? Well, they can't because, and Chekhov is just going to be distantly away because he's obviously still alive in prime way later. We'll see. Yeah. See, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for um, us to find out if that really is to bring. And if he was totally bending truth in a muck time, or if that's going to be one of the times when our juvenile edition of Captain, the adventures of Captain Kirk bent the truth a little, or something was lost in translation, or it was a transfer glitch. We have all of that. We have all of those, all of those cannon smoothing tools at our disposal now. Well, uh, Cairo, I've always said the fifth moon of Jupiter since that's what the medical reference. Ever since 1978, that's my story for dilithium. I'll go with that. Somebody in Jeff Mandel's circle came up with that, and sure, fine. That explains why we don't have dilithium right here on Earth. It's going to take long enough to go start mining the planets. Um, that, see, it's not a real hard and fast fact about that fifth moon of Jupiter thing. If you're an old school fan and you kept up with that thread, because we talk about all the places where dilithium is, Capella 4, I mean, go, you know, on... Um, Atreus, a lot of Atreus, oh, Elas, Elas, Elasian Tears and her necklace and all of that. We know where Dilithium is. We just don't know where it was first and how it came into. We know that there was no Dilithium in Cochrane's warp drive. And that's been explained away because it was so limited. It was so tiny. It was only meant to go warp one. So he didn't need the mass scale that Dilithium allows for control at higher warp speeds. Yada, yada. Um, there be Dilithium here. We'll see. We'll see. There's fan people that work on these shows now, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, glad you got her straightened out there. Yay. Thank you, Dan. Um, Dr. Piper was Paul Fix, and I've just gone blanked on who, who Philip Boyce was. John Hoyt. John Hoyt was Boyce with Pike in the cage. We've never seen a voice in the iterations of Pike now. So what we're picking, and I wondered about that. I thought it would be Boyce or Piper, or maybe a third one that we never mentioned. And for it to be Mabenga part-timer or subordinate, not CMO, be CMO now with a commander's rank on top of that? We will see. We will see. We will see. Um... Well, Rusty, maybe this is just the weird way that Spock is wearing his sideburns in 2059. Maybe this is maybe this is growing pains for Spock. I mean, have we ever seen Spock in 2059? No, we've seen him all over the place in all other kinds of conditions. Um <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Jarvis is in the house, everybody. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Yeah. And if you're not an in the weed Star Trek person, you aren't watching this. One time I was at a live con and I had like 300 people in a room and I was going through something and people were, we were forming, forum-ing, and people said something and I started to explain something basic. And I said, and I was being very school teachery and trying to keep everybody on the same level and I just started to do a backstory paragraph. But at that point, whatever it was, was so basic. I don't know what color Vulcan blood is. I don't know. What color is a, what color is a 2260s? I, whatever, whatever came up, I was about to explain it just out of rote. And then I caught myself and I said, you know what? No, if you don't know that, then just leave right now. And it was fine. I wasn't being gatekeeperly. It was in the spirit of the moment. But it's that, <laughs> that same kind of feeling. So good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, and thank you. Good to see you, Dad. Yeah. 
if you're not in the weeds, why are you watching this in the first place? Well, you know, I try to, we, we're trying to bring, yeah, I know, I know. I should just decide on a brand or I should really filtrate out my audience, you know, the marketing here and got, you know, Trekline 101 should be for explaining things. I think so many people <clears throat> have good explainer videos out there, but uh, they, I would still probably connect the dots in a different way than so many other people. But thanks, guys, <laughs> for chiming in there. <clears throat> and this is, did I say this, Mark? This is what I was just talking with James Kerwin last night. I think something inspires Mabinga to go off and study Vulcans. And then when McCoy says he interned in a Vulcan ward, he doesn't mean he interned in a Vulcan ward straight out of medical school. He means he was in Starfleet and maybe, maybe there's no controversy. Maybe he took a rank demotion to go do that because it wasn't what they wanted him to do. And then he comes back and maybe it's McCoy that sends for him because it's a known thing. I, I How nice that they've got a Kirk cast and we see young Spock. Are we going to see young McCoy? Maybe before he's aboard, maybe before we see, maybe we see, does Kirk bring Piper aboard? Is Piper the replacement for Mamigna before See, there's all kinds of fun stuff to play with there. We're getting into it a little bit with Uhura. We're sure as hell going to figure out something with, with Chapel, too. I'm waiting to see how that comes out. So, yeah, Mark, I'm. <clears throat> this is what we've been saying. That something happens and, and inspires Mabinga that he's got to know, especially the way those Vulcans are holding out on the Federation. They're not keeping, they're not being totally open with all of their medical database, all of their physiology, their basic biology and physiology. It's kind of crazy. <clears throat> Hello. And I think this is Moses. This must be new. If that is indeed your real name. Got to got to catch you up. But you're saying, don't much to say there's so many scamming so we can detect the... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. This is what you get when you only read the first two lines. And you get excited to see new people. I guess we're getting on the radar here ourselves because we've got uh, a little stuff going on this week. Uh, hello, Adam. F happy first contact day to you too. Yeah, everybody is. Uh, <clears throat> everybody's a little uh, hyper here. Uh, oh no! What do you say? This is yours. Mabinga suffers a racist attack. Vulcan save him and nursing back to health on Vulcan. Well, that would be the darker turn. It wouldn't be so much controversial on him as it would be giving all the action to somebody else, criminals. So that could happen, but I would prefer for it to be his own, his own decision to leave against the odds and to actually be punished in some way for it, to suffer some consequences that were stupid consequences. <clears throat> Um, there you go. Look at this. We're just, we're just general. I hope this is, I said, I want this to be like a season seven Strange New Worlds line as they're winding down the show. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Stephen, how's that going for you? First day back in the office. Oh, <laughs> I'm just glad you can get in for Tuesday's live. Yay, 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 yay. <clears throat> yeah, see? A prequel to what are little girls made of? Maybe we even have Roger Corby, I don't want to say seduce Christine away, but he convinces her to, to come be wherever he is studying before he goes to XO3. XO3, see? Planet Guy, the stuff is in my brain, especially the original series. Maybe Corby is the reason why Chapel leaves active service to begin with. <clears throat> and she takes a reduction. She's not a doctor. She doesn't become a full MD until going into motion picture. Or maybe she's that close to being a full MD and she just finishes the last few. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it was Corby that drew her away out of Starfleet and away from getting her doctorate. And she's been working on it unbeknownst to us those last few years. It was so great to see, to see D in all of his glory last night. I hear Chapel's an MD now. I want a nurse, not a doctor that's going to argue every diagnosis. I bet they changed everything in sick bay too. Now that's how you deal with refits. You just have McCoy gripe about it. 
How simple was that? A belated hello to you too, Dwight. Yay. <clears throat> yo, man. You can't say yo, man. Yeah. I guess I should have said ye yo, man. That was that would have uh, that would have been it. <clears throat> <laughs> Pronounce anar enar either way. You're not enal. Gotcha. 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 Um. Okay. You know what? An animated series, she might have been called by rank. All I know is she was a lieutenant by the time of motion picture. Um, and maybe it was visual. Maybe she had a... See, I'm totally off the top of my head here. Did she have a gold rank drawn in on her animated uniform? Uh, we'll see. Hey, Diana. I'm glad you can make it with us. Yep. Uh, yes, Sophia. In fact, some of my think tank folks here in LA, like I saw them last night, actually a little worried and 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 a wonder oh see i didn't even mention we had an awesome everybody i didn't even mention up front i'll mention at the end we did a wonderful panel i thought it was fine we had a great turnout we had the biggest turnout of the room we were in all weekend the room handlers told us and it was just an island to go talk and be star trek and we some of our podcasts we were talking about the intersection of the pandemic and new trek and social media and we talked a little bit about the new shows and the flood that we're coming under, but it was really more about a big picture idea. And uh, John and James and uh, Jessica Lynn Verdi and Allison Pitt from Daily Star Trek News were on the panel. And Allison has it on her blog and site. So if you want to hear the audio of our panel, it's at Daily Star Trek News. I, I did not mention that. Sorry. But in the middle of all this, we squeezed in a one day trip down to WonderCon. On the middle of all of this, it's an insane time. And we talked about Sophia hoping that the bar was not being raised. There's an old phrase here in America. It's slightly racist in nature, but I, if I can de racify it, the basic concept is uh, it was the old thing of the great white hope, but it's like now I'd call this the great trek hope. Is <laughs> Strange New Worlds the great trek hope for old school fans who have been disappointed with Discovery and even Picard? Nothing else getting back to standalone stories. We're just wondering if the bar has been set so impressively high that the first time, it's inevitable, the first time somebody has something that goes against their, you know, their fun memory, their passion point, their headcanon for 20 years, the first time something goes against that, will everything blow up? And people, I thought I could trust you, Strange New Worlds, but you're letting me down just like all the others. I've been hurt but hurt now and i know i don't know i hope not i hope not i hope it's still we haven't let we haven't hung all our hopes and aspirations on strange new worlds so long for the two freaking years that we've seen this coming that uh, that this doesn't happen and that we still have that this does happen it is still amazing the trailer the visuals look amazing uh they're shooting around toronto somebody said last night so of course there's going to be snow planets all over the place Never snow planets were always so expensive. Now there'll be a dime a dozen. Uh, yes, <clears throat> yes. Oh, Zahir, have we just been assuming Labar was the actual birthplace or that he was actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, there was a to hold on to the. In the 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 uh, generational deed to the property as the world changed, every new forebear of the family had to be the pregnant mother had to be raced to Labar to have the child in Labar and not somewhere else in the world. So, you know, good thing this didn't work with Kirk and Iowa and yeah in space. And if you're not born in Labar, it creates a whole new timeline. We could have the Bolton universe. Um, palindrome of Bolton would be not lob. Or Ipswich. The Ipswich timeline. Uh, that's funny. I don't know. You just scared me, Zahir. Now I've got to stop and think about that. But good question. Good question. <clears throat> um, yeah, Dan. Assuming he got, what, four lines? But Lloyd, we know what a great actor Lloyd Haynes was. And if there's some way to see Room 222 on some retro streaming channel somewhere you should do it i love wonderful show i played with the room 222 theme at times um 
John. You may now leave the virtual room. Trek is fiction. No, that's the point. There's fiction all around. Star Trek is different. It cared about its universe. It. You're right, though. It's human. It's made by humans who won't have everything consistent. Errors will creep in. That is why it's up to us to gap fill and cannon smooth. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We've been... I'm sorry, you can't take away the last 50 years of my life. Ooh, did I say that? I actually said that. Okay. 40 years. You can't you can't take away the last 40 years of my life. You can't take away the reason I have most of my friends met my wife, John. You can't you can't do that. Uh, <clears throat> um yeah, let's see what we got going here. Have I begun to catch up? Okay, a little bit of uh, European influence here. In uh, Czechia and Slovakia, the movie was called Star Trek Prydny Contact with the number eight. Okay, well, I can't, I can't tell what these crazy foreigners are doing with my Star Trek, Christoph. All I know is what the original, what are you talking, what, it's like a translation of a book. You might track the translations, but the native language is, I would think would be the prime material. Prime material, prime universe, prime timeline. <laughs> no one gets to see Shatner falling through V'ger's plates. No one is seeing the memory wall with the weird crystals attaching. <clears throat> as a nurse, Chapel should have started as a lieutenant. No. Um, perhaps. I'm not sure. They had an enlisted program for nurses, I'm sure, just as well as everybody else. So that could be. But then again, Linda, everybody got a pro everybody got a promotion for the motion picture. Um, I mean, Spock didn't. Spock is still a command. Well, Spock is reactivated commander. McCoy is up to commander. Um, everybody else, all the all the little four and five, everybody else who were in and in, and in, uh, in Sulu and Chekhov and Scotty. All got promoted. No, Scotty didn't. No, he did. He did. He's captain of engineering promotion comes in three, but he, he can go from lieutenant commander to command. Yeah. In fact, let's do a little live thing here. Let's just grab our handy dandy making of Star Trek, the motion picture. And in a rare case of it all, let's just, sh it's not the original. Mo We've got the paper at, at, at can you see this? There we go. Here's the memo with the ranks. All righty there. And then the correction that uh, Rand was not a not an ensign. She was a chief. She was a chief petty officer or whatever. She's a transporter chief, which again, that feeds into getting positions and ranks confused. Security chief, transporter chief. Is that a chief petty officer? Or is that a position? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, let's see. Looking at questions. Looking for questions. There you go. Uh, yeah, I don't think... I think doctors start as lieutenants or lieutenant JGs. Ah, and hello, Roy. Good to see you there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is what I was thinking. Of course, we're talking about a century apart. All this stuff I'm talking about, original series versus next-gen DS9 era, it's a century apart, and practices could have changed. So... Um, <laughs> They did, even though I haven't seen it. Uh, yes, what I mean is, Captain Calvin, the film die, the original film print, 35 millimeter, maybe it was a 70, but the film die, if you've ever had collected film clips back in the day in the 70s, I've got an album over here of Lincoln Enterprises film clips. And the, but by the 90s, the dyes had all faded so that they all went to pink, I used to say. They went to red. Now, I didn't throw mine away. A lot of people threw those away. And now we can scan them. And who knew in 10 or 20 years, you just scan it 
and then two clicks of Photoshop and you're basically back to the full intensity of the picture. So I didn't throw mine away, thank goodness. If somebody could have somehow scanned digitally that print, except you wouldn't do that. You've got digital scans already. So in the interest of having an actual print run through an actual reels of an actual projector, the best copy they had was a very pink thing. And it was very disappointing to people. I, there weren't purists that just loved the idea of having film go through an analog projector. That did not over, maybe for four people in that audience, but for most people, we sat through, yeah, a pink Star Trek, the motion pinkness. Uh, let's see. There you go, Dan. Sure, jump in there. I knew that David's been doing some interviews, so there you go. Audio changes. There was one scene in particular that jumped out at me. Uh, so everybody check that out. Um, <laughs> well, if it wasn't in there, it is now. I wasn't saying anything. Um, yeah, the Doomsday Machine redo was awesome. Okay, Justin, you are got some review. Reviews are pouring in now for the TMP 4K. Visuals were great. The audio was mind-blowing. I want to see what it sounds like on a home theater setup. Okay, you bring up the band colors on the field jackets. I was so... We were at the very end. I was waiting to see if they did. And they did. And is it okay if I get to be old fan curmudgeon and say I was disappointed? It's like, could you have left one artifact? And uh, Darren and and uh, David both looked at me like, like, are you kidding? <laughs> I said, couldn't you have just left it alone? And they were just like, no. Which I know is what you would do. But that was always the little thing. It was that little thing you could hang over people and say, did you know? And like, what? No. Which people last night said, what? No. Well, it's fixed now, but go back and get an older version and see the... And then I heard the story why, that they were doing a reshoot of the scene and and uh, D and Leonard were pissed that they were redoing the scene for that setup. And so they intentionally switched jackets out of spite because they were tired. And that was the shot they used. And no one cared about it. That's the story I heard from David last night. We'll see. I think it was David told me that story. If not Darren, then one of the guys, either Dave, Darren or David told me that which I never heard. If I heard it, it was years ago and I'd forgotten it. But it's gone. It's fixed. They're wearing their correct orange and green now. Uh, but it was amazing. It was amazing. That's a small quibble. Uh, a small quibble. Yeah, well, if Patrick is leaving active Star Trek filming and they're ending Picard with season three, uh, then that makes sense. It is their Star Trek six moment, to coin a phrase. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Sarge. You just saw it and you were gobsmacked. Yeah, happy, happy first contact day. No, they're not changing McCoy's beard. <laughs> McCoy's beard is awesome. Did I ever tell you guys about I I don't call McCoy bones. To me, Bones is Kirk's nickname, and anytime I refer, I will say McCoy, I will say DeForest Kelly, and D, I will, I knew the guy, I met the man a few times, and, and anybody like that, you feel, it's like Gene, you may never have met Gene, but you feel like you can call him Gene. You might say Roddenberry, and you'd never say Mr. Roddenberry, and, uh, but I just, I, and all the fan talk of all these decades, I never call McCoy Bones. It's like, that's Kirk's nickname for him. No one else calls him Bones. I shouldn't either. I know there's a wall between fiction and reality. But I just feel weird calling McCoy Bones. That's just my thing. You, The rest of fandom, do whatever you want to do. And if you feel, if that's your thing, then of course you should do it. I'm just telling you my personal choice. And I don't know if I've ever said that out loud before. So there you go. Happy first contact day. <laughs> Uh, Sophia, that's the way I felt. That's the way I felt. And I hope I have now not raised the bar so high on expectation on that, that I've blown it for you. Wow, John, you are very disciplined. When you say remastered, you don't even mean 
you mean the did the director's edition, which was an edit, and then technically remastered for 4K. Uh, <laughs> gush away, my friend. Yeah. Uh, okay. And here's the link for everybody. TNG cast in Picard season three. Well, Terry showed me a picture a few weeks ago and said I was sworn to secrecy. I'm just shocked that they're letting it out now. It's like, really? Really? They've got so much going on between the TMP movie to sell Paramount Plus subscriptions, and you've got First Contact Day. They didn't They didn't space this out. I wonder if it was leaked. It was about to go. They had to race the leak so the blackmailer couldn't extort them. <laughs> gush to you. Can't gush anymore. Okay, Dan. It's back to center seat. Thought it was awful. Yeah, I'm going to say, Dan, there were, and, and certain people, I think I misspoke once or twice and I tried to fix it later on, but I had no control over what they were doing. I know there's one where I intend, I said the year wrong. I think I said 65 instead of 64 once, but I was intentionally trying to stay away from things I did not have 100% verified, unlike some people on camera that I saw later on. And then in real life, I've tried to steer around those theories. And when we talk on the Trek files, I really, really try to, if something is at issue, I try to label it that way and not as done factoids. But um, I like some of the cleverness in the writing and the way Gates handled it. But um, I noticed they would say Federation of Planets all the time. Yeah, I know. Um, the fact that, see, now here's a contention. We don't have Lucy to talk about. I know that um, sometimes you have to look at some things like like between, oh, Bob Justman and Herb Solo's book. They were working on it together. They were two different people and they wound up doing a deal together so they could both get done because Pocket wouldn't have them do separate books. And then they one of them would have been off with some lesser publisher and it never would have had the platform. But having said that, I totally will trust anything 100% that Bob Justman says. Herb Solo, and he's gone now, um, there are times when you have to put a Herb filter on it because, and he has a lot of room to say this, that a lot of credit that he got in the beginning for Star Trek goes to other people. And that's a, that's a thing that happens up and down the board. And I know he tried to share the story of Lucy and the USO tour in the South Pacific. And that's the only Star Trek she thought of. But she, she did fight to override the board about making Star Trek and Mission Impossible's pilots because she wanted to grow the studio. And on one hand, I used to say that they did break it. But then on the other hand, they sold and made a ton of money. And um, all those guys on the board, nobody went begging after the sale. So, yeah, there you go. There were times, I, I hear you. I hear you, Dan. But I, my point is, I still think Center Seat is a great intro to the completely unwashed world out there that still has no idea. And the Lucy Desi tie into Star Trek is really, really useful for people. My older brother and sister in law <laughs> said, Well, you tried to explain Lucy and Desi in Star Trek when we were out there with you. But I never got it until now. So I'll take that. I'll take that. Then if they want to go to the next step further, they can kind of refine that. But I'll take that. I'll take that awareness if we can penetrate the public on History Channel. If there's a few a few uh, things here and there that aren't exactly nailed down or they're, they're playing a little fast and loose, uh, we'll just deal with that when th those people come to the next level. Uh, hi, Rose. Happy first contact day to you, too. Yay. Um, yeah. Are they sure? I guess they're showing. Hey, Andrew, by this, you mean that they're showing it at Mission? Well, cool. Hopefully, they'll have it on a big screen. I have not even looked at the schedule for Mission Chicago. I, there's been a compression of so much stuff blowing up right now, including the news that you don't even know about, guys, gals, peeps. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'll say it again. Happy first contact to you, Adrian. So good to see so many folks in here. 
4K porn good. No, 4K porn's fine. If everything was in 4K resolution and it didn't ruin it, that's fine. Starship porn good. I know. I'm using we're we're desensitizing the word there. Uh gosh. And Marie, I have no idea what you're awing, but you'll have to tell me sometime if you even remember. Yeah, that flyby, Sophia, was a reward for 10, 12 years of fandom. You know, keeping the saga alive, giving all those people's careers and jobs when they had to be paying their mortgage on 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 nothing but adulation alone. There was no money behind it. So yeah, it was it was a complete vindication, and it was a it's a pop culture revolution. No other dead show had ever been made into a fully theatrical motion picture, much less a yeah the Batman movie and you know here and there the Galactica movie. They, things would be cobbled together and stuck in theaters at times, but they were always like TV movie quality, and you purely went to the theater just because you were a huge fan of that thing. There'd never been a TV scale or a, a cinema scale version of an, a TV show, much less a failed little three-year show. So, you know, there was never a bonanza motion picture. Hmm... You don't know if you have any tears left after the Picard season three teaser today. I know. And how how dare they run that just as I'm going to press? That kills me. I was racing around before this doing having to do details before Chicago. Uh, I didn't even get a chance to check. Check the wires before we went on live. Wow, Mark, you saw motion picture on the big screen for the first time three years ago how it was meant to be seen. And the V'ger effects don't have the same effect on a small TV. And the V'ger effects are different than they were in 2001, even. You do get a real... There's such a narrative sense of the threat and the fluff, and then stripping away the fluff down to the heart of the, of the, of the machine, of the creature. It makes... It makes at the last third of the show, when it's at Earth, there, it's just so much clearer in the storytelling visuals that service the story. Okay. What do we got next? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> of the beautiful account of the TMP night. And well, I'm telling you, if you follow anybody on social, get look at, I mean, I know everybody's excited about first contact day and now the Picard trailer is out there and you're still talking about the strange new worlds things. But if you can take some time, to go look at the Instagrams and the Facebooks and maybe the tweets of folks that were there. And I haven't put my pictures up yet. I'm saving some of them. I got I got my selfie files updated big time last night. I'll just say that. With folks that I hadn't seen in ages. In ages. I can think of somebody right off the bat that I hadn't selfied with in 15 or 16 years. So... Uh, and Linda, you're going to wait and see it at Mission Chicago. Well, there you go. Big screen. You, me, and Andrew can all watch it again together. Uh, thank you. I know I never heard the word gobsmacked. It's British until I heard Marina using it all the time. And I went, we have no word for that. In uh, Stop dead in my tracks is kind of the closest thing I think of. Um, okay. Meanwhile, back over at current Picard, you like Fly Me to the Moon, and the whole Gerardi Queen thing is going to be the most awkward, awesome double cough thing. Of all. Um, I know. I can't wait to see how that blooms and blossoms and where it exactly leaves, leaves up. Uh, there you go. So, spoilers, no more. It's out there, everybody. It's out there. Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. Uh, yes, Fran is so... I've only gotten to know her just since last Vegas. So, I mean, personally. And we had a lot of fun. We, she did an earlier Trek Files with me, so... Uh... Or Ro, or Pulaski, or Yar. All of them, yeah. 
that's where that would be really bizarre. So, to, but if Yar is back, does that mean that everything with Sela didn't happen? <laughs> we've we've had nothing but we've had. Uh, it's been small fish, small fry, nothing, nothing. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Dave. As I said, I really guard. I love all my podcast and live stream peeps, but on the Trek files, I really try to have industry people and people from the day or people connected or people one step away from the connection. I really try to have horses mouths people there because we can see fans talking about fa like right now we can find fans talking about fans stuff all the time. And I really try to keep Trek files to that, which is a hard part of keep two times like this week for instance <laughs> oh boy uh and i will second that emotion yes you got an email from parrot today jared was it from parrot in uh, parrot analytics or just a parrot um yeah, isn't it amazing, Cairo, that Picard got to be number two on the week they stopped? <laughs> I think I see it. Is that a conspiracy or a reaction or what? Oh, my God, Star Trek's gotten too good. We have to stop. It's a sign from God. Uh, I don't know. And yes, of course, for us, he's number one. Absolutely. Uh-oh. How do I get out of this? Boom. There we go. Um, <laughs> actually, Riker is number one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> actually, Dan, uh, yes, I did. And everybody here in the stream told me I was a little distracted. I can tell the story after Saturday, after Friday. I can't believe I went to the screening last night doing everything I had to do in the last 24, 36 hours. But it'll all be good. It'll all be good. And Dave, you're coming to PinguaCon. Yes. I'm gonna, I've got such an awesome, I need to start using that. I'm going to be at PinguaCon. Well, I'll say that at the end. PinguaCon at the end in Greater Detroit, the end of April. And I am so excited for the programming lineup that we're doing some things out of the ordinary because it's sci-fi and makers. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be not a typical con, even though it's going to be sooner con sized. It's going to be 12, 1500 people. Uh, and Star Trek is just one of the flavors in the buffet, but I can't wait. It's going to be so exciting. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, hey, comedy forecast. You're still an enigma to me, but I'm glad to see you here again. You just saw it too, and you missed our discussion, but hey, you saw the thing, so that's absolutely. Keep my family's wine out of your burgundy brick mouth. You notice how I didn't even I didn't even go there. I didn't even touch that. That's out there enough everywhere else. And and a lot of good discussion surrounding it. But I figure you get that everywhere else. We don't need that in, in track. Unless unless there's some kind of a relevant connection. Uh, thank you, Anne Marie. You get it, Bob Newhart Con. Yeah, it would. No, actually, we should call it the Hi Bob Con. That's what it would be. It would be Hi Bob, Hi Bob, Hi Bob. Drink. Well, Anne Marie, this is a good. That might work in Vegas. I have no clue what's. I'm. i after. I'm off here. One of my remaining tasks is to sit down and filter and try to see what everybody is doing everywhere. And if there's any room to either carve out some more, a, a separate time or else go partner with somebody. And, uh, you know, our good friend Marina, if she's not on with us today, I've already consulted the events tracking queen. And she's like, I, uh, she's already bonkers. So if, if Marina is that way, I know it's no mortal is going to be able to keep up with it. So we'll just see. Uh, no, there was only one. Sorry, Tobias. <laughs> Newhart is just a pale imitation. Aside from Larry, Larry, and Daryl, 
that was like the highlight of the thing. And other than that, I mean, it's all good people. Lots of people got a paycheck. Lots of people were entertained over the years, but you cannot compare Newhart to Bob Newhart show. I'm sorry. As shown by the ending, <laughs> which is one of the most masterful moments in all of TV history. I finally found Bob Newhart on one of the streaming channels and I watched the Bicentennial show again and just laughed and laughed. It wasn't as funny as I remembered when I was a kid, but I still laugh and laugh and laugh. Uh, they're all, oh, Howard. He's some, I mean, you know, I'm so glad that it's amazing that he has two great roles for people to remember him by. Uh, Roger Healy on I Dream of Jeannie and Howard. Howard Borden. And his... And his brother, Norman Borden, the Mormon doorman. <laughs> okay. No more Bob Newhart for the moment. Um, oh, and the, the show with his prison group who were going to re-enter society. And one of them came and held him up, but he, he didn't want to leave prison. So he was holding him up to be thrown back and not released. But when, he's got him up against the wall in the apartment. And when Howard comes in and goes... Don't just stand there. And Howard runs over and holds this. Is, this thing could go any minute. <laughs> he could have rescued them from the guy with the gun, but he, and the guy with the gun is so, um, okay. Sorry. 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 One of the, I still bust a gut laughing at that scene. When I'm able to see. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. Captain Calvin, Bob Newhart. He was, uh, he was in the library and he was also, Professor Proton on Big Bang Theory, the aging science kids show star that they idolized and kidnapped. Well, Dan, you don't know how long I've not been able to penetrate a computer, do you? You don't know my life, Dan. You don't know my life. Uh, very funny. Very funny, Rusty. He had the Wharf goatee, but with his makeup, go to Eggplant Disco or to Retro TNG? Very funny. More controversy. More controversy. Actually, I probably got a picture that I could go see and figure out. I think it's I think it's going to be actual Disco. I guess they came to an agreement on a price for him, huh? Um... So you guys are spoiling it for me now. Did you ever think about that? It's a reverse here. Oh, boy. Well, Captain, I'm sure she could play an older to Paul. Question is, would she? And if there's anything we've learned in Star Trek, it's never say never. So. Oh, Stingray. Someday I'm going to learn your name. Stingray, what do I hear or hope for will be announced at Star Trek Mission Chicago? HD for DS9 Voyager. A Trek experience, attraction, Trek movie news, another new Trek show, Reviled? Reviled? Revised? <laughs> Did you mean revised or reviled? Because it could, you know, go either way. I don't know. I just had a conversation last night. I've had a hope that there would be a Trek series still in California at Santa Santa Clarita Studios to take advantage of the tax credit. And I was told last night that the California tax credit, I knew that Picard was here because Patrick said, I'm doing it in California. I'm not doing it in, uh, in Toronto. And since it was going to be Picard, that was part of the deal. And they made it, they made it so. And the tax credit helped, but it did, excuse me, it did not put it anywhere near it's still much 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 cheaper to shoot these shows in toronto than it is down here sadly uh yes so apparently we are not getting a replacement la show after picard which saddens my heart but we've got all these picard locations and we'll have the legacy of it and i miss seeing the sets just by a couple of weeks i didn't think i uh, don't even send me there but some intriguing things about the future of those sets. So I, I'm just, you know what? This is the first time in ages. I'm so focused on some other things that I'm just like, whatever you want to spoon feed me, I am fine. <laughs> I would love to be a part of some things, but if I'm not, I've got enough stuff going on that 
it's all fine. It's all good. Star Trek is living long and prospering, I think. And different slices of fandom are finding different things to float their boat. Most of them. Most of them. Yeah. Yep. 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 In fact, here's a fun story, Dan. So, you know, Darren Doctorman was working in the the veteran army in the art department on, but thanks to Dave Blass, on Picard season two and into three. And they were both telling the story last night about the day he came to Dave and said, well, I have to leave the show. And Dave said, no, you're not leaving. And he said, I have to, because we're getting a chance to go work through the motion picture 4K. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like only for that. Nothing else would have let him let him uh, be released from his commission. Like a lower decks moment there or something. Mm -hmm. And you'll be, <laughs> see how this works? See how the domino theory works? She's stalking me, and you're going to stalk her, and we'll all be walk trudging around Chicago, maybe in the snow on Friday. The last I saw it was supposed to be snowing. But then again, I haven't touched actual media in 24 hours, aside from emails. Uh -huh. They could find... <laughs> the thing they find on EO, an IO could be a black cuboid or a wooden blue box. Yes, there you go. Uh, well, Dan, you can wonder about that alien yeoman cult. I'm just talk about things that just kind of quietly go away, Dan. I'm totally happy to have alien. I know, I know, I know. At some point we'll have to, Colt will be her nickname and it'll be like, you know, yeoman Jack or something. And Colt was just her assailable nickname. Maybe yeoman Colt is a fact. So in, in three decades from now, when they're desperate for new ideas, they're going to come back. They're going to pluck out that one, what, she had four close-ups in that one episode. We're going to explore the backstory of Alien Yeoman Cult because it's Star Trek and we leave no stone unturned. We need no collectible comic card, trading card, untouched. Uh, yes, I, I've his hair has been bizarre to me yeah oh william that's i can't believe you said this and i can't believe i just put it up uh if, you know what uh dave it might just be a conga line and that will be sad and the thing is it'll be probably many conga lines at this place it's gonna be wild mark sickle it is good to see you too. Is this your first time with us on Tuesday? I'm so thrilled to see everybody here turning out. This has been an amazing, this has been an amazing Tuesday. Um, I thought that this would be, I didn't know what how Tuesdays would feel after we gave up doing life support on Saturdays, because I know a lot of people can't join us during the day, but it feels like we're growing even. So maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe restricting the flow is increasing demand. I don't know. I don't know. But here's an actual question, Susan. With the release of season three for Picard trailer, do you think this means that season three will air later this year? If it's not going to be released until next year, the trailer is very early. I know. I'm shocked that they did this and why. Again, I'm thinking maybe there was a leak coming. I mean, seriously, a leak coming? And they wanted to get in front of it? That's, that's very cloak and daggery. Because after this, we were talking about Picard, and then what's after Picard? Oh, Strange New Worlds. And then after Strange New Worlds, Lower Decks, and then Prodigy, unless Prodigy overlaps with any of the other two shows, and then how fast do they get Picard finished? And does Picard air at the end of the year? I don't know. And Discovery, and what's the replacement show in the slot for Picard. Is it section 31 now? We will see. We will see. Slowly. Well, see, this is all about how many... We know who was there for Where No Man. 
and you were missing McCoy and Uhura, unless Uhura was there the whole time she was below decks. She just wasn't on the bridge for the two days of Gary Mitchell going bonkers. I don't know. Who could play a young McCoy? Well, I, 20 years ago, I wanted Gary Sinise to play McCoy, but that ship sailed. Um, boy, I haven't thought about this. Uh, and, you, and you know, I'm going to have a lot to say about this. I mean, Carl is even too old to play a young McCoy now. But then McCoy, see, McCoy was always 10 years older than everybody. I don't know. Has Carl, has Carl, a, but Carl won't do a se series unless this was very cinematically, I don't know. How are the, he did a series. He did, what, what was his series he did? But it was untimely ended after a season or two. Depends on where he is and where the whole line between TV movies is. It might not be. I shouldn't dismiss it so out of hand. But they might go with a fresher, younger actor, I'm betting. Not too young, though. Somebody that's going to be 10 years older than our, our new young Kirk. So there you go. Yeah, we figured out that the slots are filled through December and into January. We will see. <laughs> Dan, he said a young McCoy. So I'm thinking 35, 35 or 40. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, yeah, they're done. Sets are gone. Terry's looking for a job. Dave is looking for a job. They're, yeah, they're done. Done, done, done. Post is working. Post is working. But everything connected with the live stages is done. There's going to be, I just heard two or three fun stories last night that I don't want to say yet. I want to let the originators of stories have the chance to say them on a stage somewhere in an interview, assuming they get invited to stages. <clears throat> That's, I'm going to do my part on that. I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> do a part one the things girls are made of yeah mm, mm, mm. a young nancy crater in strange new worlds right well see but it was only strange new worlds is starting at 2259 and nancy crater man trap was 66 strange new worlds first year is only seven years before so we're gonna be uh, slicing I, again. I, I'm trusting that they've got uh, Dayton there and with Dave right behind him. No, Rusty. Oh my gosh! I went to Starfest when I was. I wrote. I was writing on the initial edition of the Companion in the back seat with Janet driving our 12 hour drive to Denver for Starfest. I was riding in the back seat of the car on the companion because I had three months to get it done. And we went to see Starfest and it was Patrick's first convention ever. And it was the weekend that heart of glory premiered. And he was talking about the intensity in Michael's eyes. And he wouldn't talk about it until Sunday because it aired on Saturday night in Denver. And he wouldn't talk about it until Sunday. He also did the entire hour on Saturday. He was trying to see if he had his stage lungs and he did the whole hour without a mic to the two or 3,000 people in the hall. And on Sunday, he said, that was great. I'm glad I did it, but I'm, I still have to film on Monday. <laughs> and I'm not going to do that again. Uh, but thank you for the heads up, Rusty. It's probably happening very quickly and it's probably overlapping something else I have to do. But that's... Um, oh, Carl. Yeah, Why didn't you guys tell me? <laughs> uh, wow. Star Starland and everything they did was my model. I went back to Oklahoma and said, this is how you do an old school Star Trek con still in the 90s. Oh, thank you, Christoph. Featuring me interrupting Allison and getting beeped out a few moments later. I think she was, I think, uh, yeah. She, she, she or somebody said something. That's funny. Uh, 
Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I, you said that. Everybody said that, and I went, wait a minute. The animated series, a solid gold. Yeah, Lieutenant. And uh, not Lieutenant JG, because we've had one, there is one case of a Lieutenant JG in the original series. And it was probably an accident or a time crunch. But anybody know? Anybody know? There was one Lieutenant JG scene in the original series. And I'll just say first season. Uh, but yeah, she was definitely Lieutenant in the motion picture. So the animated series was after the original series. So if she was a ensign or whatever, she, uh, depend, you know, if she was demoted, then it could have been a, you know, you can do anything with a demotion. <laughs> this is why we missed you, Comedy Forecast. The Labar has been raised. Yes. If you wonder how he eats and sleeps in other science facts, la, 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 just repeat for yourself. It's just a show. That's a quote from something. And if it's Star Trek, I'm just shoot me then. Uh, we've seen this all over the place, Dan. There are lots of Brits and Australians doing their American accents. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Why do you keep... I don't... There are so many young actors out there that I have no clue who. I see them hosting Saturday Night Live and I have to go check out who it is. And I'm sorry if that makes me grandpa on the lawn. I'm not yelling at anybody. I just, I got my own stuff to keep up with. I, and it's a good sign that uh, things are staying fresh and not stagnating. I have no idea. And whether or not they can do an organic, actual Scotty accent, a Scottish accent, or they're going to do a James Doohan Scottish accent. Or if they're Scottish and they're going to corrupt their own accent, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it was a great book, except it was in it was done at the time, and they couldn't get into the Robert Avril contra. You know, they didn't have the saga finished, much less if they could do that in a licensed book. But for at the time, it was very good, and Susan did it, and has a lot of a lot of a lot of bits in there about the. Um, that was my go-to. If you saw the tags in my making of, yeah. The making of Star Trek, the go-to bits in here, you do get an idea about the story and all that. But uh, the main thing is the color pictures. The main thing, though, is uh, Bob Fletcher's alien descriptions for all the species. The Amazarites and all of that. It's all in here. And it was the way, main way you had access to it. The photos were on the album sleeve. The descriptions were in the making of. That was probably the most, the single best part of the whole book, or useful part of the book. There's a lot of filler in there, but she's got other. Uh, what are you saying here? It is now 003 right now. Oh, for you guys. Okay. <clears throat> uh, no, they've never totally followed military protocols. They use it as a stepping stone, but uh, it's not a military. Remember, Linda? It's not a military service. The ranks are just perfunctory. You have your slide, singular slide from Lincoln. There you go. Uh, are you wrong or are the Chekhov background voiceovers new? Uh, are you talking about in the 4K? I did not pick up on it. Maybe so, or maybe uh, the one moment I was talking about last night was things that were there. I did hear a story that they found some ADR some of the reasons that the, the scene seems fresh, one scene in particular, is because the movies we've all heard, had, including the 2001 Director's Edition, the audio was the on-set audio and the AD, like looping was, they redid a lot of the bridge looping because of the clattery projectors behind you guys. Are, this is an old story. All the projections in the bridge windows were actual projectors running analog film because it was 1979. And they were so noisy that almost everything on the bridge had to be re-looped. And there are a couple of scenes where they've tried to play with it. And one of the discoveries they made just recently in time for this was they found the ADR re-looped dialogue for that. So now the audio isn't as muddy and the audio is crisper, which adds to your sensory perception that the whole picture is crisper. Uh, yeah. There's a whole thing about how no one ever thinks about sound. Beginning directors, beginning producers put sound off to the end. They're so worried about the visual. And yet when audiences are sitting in, if you've gone cheap, 
or just not if you haven't re-looped things if you haven't done sound effects if you haven't put footsteps in and door closes or pumped them up if you haven't done that people sense something is off but they don't know what to talk the joke was people would say wow that was really a dark scene like the lighting was dark well, what they're talking about is their senses picked up on how the the audio tracks and the the ADR the sound effects and even the dialogue tracks weren't up to par or were non-existent and I swear to God, the bridge does seem warmer. And I know they've tweaked, you know, they've tweaked the color, but uh, to warm it up. But that was one of the things. They found the ADR tracks for more of the bridge. And so when you see it, bridge dialogue, especially in master scenes, and the one long pan to begin, the one long pan is an amazing redo. Uh, but there you go. So new, not in the sense of Walter just recorded it, but new in the sense of, that and most of the rest of them are it was the adr that was recorded and they just did not have time to go in and re-loop everything in the insanity of that slap dash which i totally understand happens in books too mm -hmm. uh thank you cairo for that so they haven't shown visuals of them okay so they're hanging back with that then maybe I better hold on to my uh, shared photo then. Um, oh, oh, excuse me, Christoph. Star dates are based on mountain time because that's where Bozeman, Montana is. Right. So it's, oh, I see what you're saying. So you guys in Europe are ahead of the curve. Yep, 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 yep. There you go. Um spammer uh no i have wait yes i did i'd forgotten that i saw it and i'm vaguely trying to remember it's been a week ago i think yes <laughs> then i've never called spock a green-blooded vulcan because that was mccoy's nickname well, I didn't think it was a recurring nickname. It's not capitalized. Bones is capitalized. So I can call Spock a green-blooded Vulcan. You have to say, oh. you have to, McCoy's oh, is down there. Well, what about the captain? We can't just, doctor, you are out of line. Well, so are you, sir. See, you got to gutsify it. Things I did not do when I did continues because I thought they would be too over the top. And then they were missing. Uh, yes, I did know this. They called McCoy, McCoy's nickname in Germany was Pill. And now Pill is the doctor of the show. Yep. Coincidence? You think not. Yeah. Well, I know Allison Pill from Newsroom. So there we go. Ah. So, Anne-Marie, did you guys get, like, frantic phone calls from actors later on? <laughs> uh, Dan, what a question. You know, I knew Ira when he didn't color his beard. Blue or the purple? I guess the blue is what most people know now. I guess. I guess. <laughs> they... <laughs> They feared that Franks would blurt it out in Chicago. Well, now there was a Vegas where he had a T-shirt made up and said, don't ask me, I signed an NDA. And it was his T-shirt. Pretty funny. Uh, now's the time to do the Picard season three companion, tell Terry. Well, considering Terry's looking for a job, I don't think he's in the driver's seat. <laughs> but he has promised me to sit down, which may apparently is coming closer and closer than we all thought. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he owes me. He owes me. Um, exactly. He had, yes, he got burned once or twice early on. Remember how he, he, he blurted out the mirror universe and discovery season one, I think among other things. <clears throat> Uh, this would be interesting, Michael. I I hate to think that the viewership is sagging. And Picard is on um, 
Picard is on Prime around the world. Not yeah, right, 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 right. Not just Amazon. I really hate. I mean, it started off with a bang, and I've seen nothing but buzz. Everybody talking about the art thing of the week, or the casting thing, or the Watcher, or the whatever. Stargazer this, and Alt Universe that, and Skull this, and Dukat and Sarek Skull, or whatever. Ferengi Skull. Um, M. Talus Skull. So uh, something feels like they needed to get out in front of it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe it's tied into something from... They want to do something at, um, at Mission, and they wanted something to be in front of that rather than have it be from Mission, Chicago. Uh, yeah. Well, you enjoyed Center Seat. I think it, I think it got a lot of, it got a lot of work done for a broad audience of people that are mundane towards Star Trek. I think it did. It was really good. Now, uh, uh, a fan that's been around the block once or twice, maybe there are bits here and there, but listening to fandom talk about Center Seat, I, it's like, that's not, I was lumping Center Seat and Prodigy in the same boat and Prodigy has shown that it's very entry level, but it's also for for the 20 year and 30 year fan too. So, mm -hmm. in fact, is anyone, is anyone from TNG at Chicago actually, aside from Will, who's hosting the Ready Room? I think all the TNG cast, there's a Comic Con in Philadelphia. They were already, I think. That's what I remembered hearing a couple of months ago, and whether it cracked or not, there may be no next gen people at Strange at Mission Chicago. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are definitely they are definitely since it's a home owned property and not studio owned. Center seat is going to be on Blu ray DVD as soon as they can get it out. I'm sure that's a plan, and that's been said out loud. Yes. Uh, really? Uh, okay. Really? I've never got to do that, but I just got to block somebody. Okay. Here. Uh, wow. Somebody else. Michael, you're with me on that, huh? Yeah, I can't, I can't call McCoy Bones. I've never called McCoy Bones. Well, yes, Cairo, that was part of the big, big deep dive, deep dive picture. <laughs> we should not let this die. For the EMP pulse come or the EM pulse comes along, we'll want our discs. Uh, Narda, it's fine. I'm just glad that you're here with us for a little bit. <clears throat> should we get a Bonanza reboot? I'm just saying a big, colorful, sweeping show. If there was a show that you might have thought by standard mundane terms would have been made into a big budget movie, a sprawling Western, you could have started with that. But, you know, the Ponderosa. Yes, her presenting. I keep, yes, it's the European, the British European thing about calling hosting presenting. To me, a presenter is someone who comes out and goes, and here it is. And then they walk away. It's the, it's the game show models. It's the Carol Merrill's. Uh, but that's the thing, yes. And he's a presenter on BBC Two. Uh, but I thought she did a very adroit job, and they wrote good stuff for her. They they turn on a dime and pivot. <clears throat> uh, that's I. You know, I bet that someone asked Leonard something about this, but I don't think it was ever a big deal. I, I'll ask a couple of people if they have any clue. I'll ask my friend Bonnie, who is a big uh, follower and all that. Uh, hello, Clinton. Uh, are you first time with us? If so, welcome, welcome. Wow, this, is, this feels like a much bigger... Maybe it's the first contact day excitement in the motion picture in Chicago and Picard boiling in the Strange New Worlds trailers. You remember loving the Interface flyover from 79, and you felt like every fan who had gone through the lean years was there giving a push out of dry dock. Yes, it was a thank you and an homage and a tip of the hat and all of that. And it's something that 
people watching right now for the first time have no clue about, and that's totally understandable. And that's why all of us need to keep the context. Same thing with Next Generation. People need to know that Cupid with Sherwood Forest was done the year that there were two Robin Hood movies. It was a big Robin Hood craze. You know? People, I forget that people don't know Enterprise Incident was, an, was a takeoff on the Pueblo Incident. When North Korea captured a submarine, the Pueblo. And that was, it was meant to be a, a nod to that. <clears throat> yeah, do you, do you guys have a translation for gobsmacked? I don't know. You can, oh, this is it. Uh, Baff. Verblüft. Okay. Doesn't have the same punch. See, that's what I see. What English is there, or American English is, uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh no, I'm buffering. I haven't heard anyone say anything about the picture today. So I hope I hope that's just you, Narda. I hope it's not you, but I'm hoping it is. Uh, well, that would be something, Dan. If even Echeb could be resurrected. You know what? I didn't even realize that, but that's a gob is such a um, another English slang term. We don't say gob for that. Yeah. Smacked in the mouth. And see, to me, it's more like the brain and the body. But OK, viscerally, viscerally. But there we go. Thank you. I'm just being told by my control tower off chat. Thank you, John Connor, that there's no hiccups today. Yay. Yes, I had not heard of that story until we saw the photos pop up. I'd never, I'd never seen that, but that's awesome. If whether there is some correspondence between Clint Eastwood and somebody in Star Trek, that's funny. Oh, good. Uh, hey, Carl, I'm reading from my combined chat here in Restream, which is everybody, Facebook, and we've got Twitch people, and we've got uh, Facebook and. YouTube. Yeah, Beaky. <laughs> Doug Drexler's parrot is sending emails to Jared. Yes, Beaky. Beaky. Oh. Okay, gang. Uh, it's nearly four o'clock. I've got to I've got a call coming in of somebody I ought to take the call from, but I can't talk to you in front of you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, that would be a big deal. They are having a live Strange New Worlds premiere that I've been guessing about. And it's going to be in New York, and I probably will not make it. So, uh, Oh, awesome, Dave. Your first time to PengoCon, you come in Detroit. The program looked interesting. Dave, make sure and tell them that you're coming just because of me, okay? <laughs> not like I'm going to be a regular or anything. Uh, hi, Bob. Emery, you do know that's the drinking game. Every time somebody says hi, Bob, on Bob Newhart, you uh, take a drink. That's been the drinking game since forever. Okay, Clinton. Oh, you're, you're, see, you're outed yourself. Okay, okay. Well, you're still a recent convert, so it's good to have you, Clinton. Uh, thanks for coming over and putting it in. Yes. Um, Okay, I'm looking so glad to have you. We are going to wrap it up fairly quickly, guys, because I think I've got phone calls that I need to get back to there, if you heard it buzzing. Um, this is the thing, Cairo. Um, we are probably going to wind up at our hotel. It'll probably be nine before we even get in to check in. So I don't know if there's late night stuff happening, but I wanted to investigate that. I don't know, but having something akin to landing party, or if there's a see, this, there's different. There's at least two host hotels and bars, and people are spread out, and it's just, it's just. Um, I, you know, John Champion's not coming, but he's from Chicago or he lived in Chicago for years, and his knowledge is, is ten years of slightly out of date. But um, just trying to pick a thing, it's just going to depend on where. The fandom flow goes where the eddies and nooks and, and it may never be unified the way it is. Even at the Rio, people had to walk through the Rio to get back over to the Gold Coast. 
or walk out the front door to take a taxi back to wherever they were. So um, we will see. We will see. Uh... <laughs> oh, wow. He was on ALF too. Okay, see, I never watched ALF. But okay, that's fine. Really lame 80s, 90s sitcoms by that time were... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's anything old now is sentimental because you can't tell somebody what they had when they were a kid is bad. So I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, yes, it always takes place in Southfield. Yes. Uh, let me see. Okay. We're going to no judgment on your part. Larry. Okay. Thank goodness, Dan. Um, Oh boy, we're all the way back to there. Revised, reviled, or revealed. There we go. We're going to, uh, yeah. Now you've got the Bob New. There were Mary Tyler Moore shows, but it was not a spinoff of Mary Tyler Moore's show. MTM Studios was a juggernaut there. Uh, but yeah, Julie Kavnar was was was. Yes, she was the girl that was in one of his groups that was always trying to go on a diet and was paranoid about her looks and everything and, and dating and all of that. <sighs> could be. They could be tweaking. They tweaked the Picard theme this season. They might be tweaking it to be a little bit more there. Uh, this is Carlton, your doorman. What was that from? Was that from Rhoda? This is Carlton, your doorman? Yes, Lorenzo Music, one of the one of the producers. He always sounded like he was drunk. This is Carlton, your doorman, on her intercom. Yes, it's an interesting mix, Dave, talking about PenguinCon. It's a sci-fi and a makers con mashup. Uh, and they're going to use me for things beyond Star Trek, which is going to be interesting, too. Uh, do I have thoughts on La La Land ending their run as truck soundtracks? I hadn't seen the news, Dan, and I saw... This is very sad. I shouldn't have even said anything. Uh, my La La Land contact last night for about three nanoseconds. I need to watch more. I have a lot more to do than watch trailers, Christoph. I can watch trailers on a plane. <laughs> trailers on a plane! Yes. <clears throat> I saw a 30 or 50% chance of snow on Thursday, Friday. But if I'm in a hotel attached to the convention center, I shouldn't worry about it too much. But who knows how much people are going to be wanting to walk around to get to clubs at night. It's just going to be, yeah. Uh, thank you. That is my headcanon, Cairo, and I'm going to stick with it since I never thought about it until now. Freaks on a plane. <laughs> freaks on a plane. There you go, which we all know is pretty hard to do. If you can get freaks on a plane committed to a con, then you've done something. Uh, that's not a bad thing, John. This is some non-chat chat going on here. Frank's on a plane. Um, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Except that I don't think the TNG cast is at Chicago. I think they're at a Comic-Con in Philadelphia. Uh, thank you, Anne Marie. That's what I heard that two months ago. Yeah. They were having trouble. Well, that'll, I'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> oh, good. The teacher strike in Sacramento is over. This is good. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Melanie, for the local news there. Uh, William, I think I will, I'm going to have Janet with me at Comic-Con and maybe even others with me. And it's going to be a sooner con like none other for me this year. So um, they're giving me an award. I'm going to be in the Hall of Fame for Oklahoma Speculative Fiction. So with CJ Cherry, which is, blows me away. Very, very nice of them to doing that. Um, uh, yeah, safe bet, Dwight. Say, I had a non-answer answer that all those sets had been stored. So, yes. <clears throat> okay, you, you can leave now, Cairo. Her first name is Hot Ann. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, I'm thinking it's Philadelphia. Thinking it's Philadelphia. <clears throat> the other McCoy should be played by the other vampire guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there we go. Boom, Philly. It was Philly. That's what I thought. I'd been told a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Those new great grandparents. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Almost human. Thank you. That was the season he did on Fox as a series. <clears throat> uh, not sure what he's doing. But uh, yes. And the boys. He's doing the boys. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely no reason we can't see flashbacks on Stranger. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, StarCon and StarFest were the two that Steve and Kathy did. Uh, Steve, and, Steve and Walker in Denver did. And his Starland was his store. So whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> these con stories. I know. And Dan Madsen's working on his book. I... One of these days, I'm going to start thinking about telling this stuff besides just bits in, in uh, these panels and things. Uh, okay. Oh, my God. I'm way behind. It's a quote from the MST3K Infantron. That's right. I'd forgotten. I'm a blur. I need to get off, guys. I really do need to get out. Um, Carl, that's right. You've been at Star, yeah, Starfist since 93. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> Melanie, is, is there such a phrase as popular radio? Is it so niche and digital that it's not even, um, not even a thing? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, an Aussie doing a Brit accent in, uh, Drek is a lot rare. Yeah. Real to real tapes, VCRs, and landlines. Welcome to first generation fandom. Yeah. Uh, I know. I can ask Ralph Miller anything about sound. He's awesome and should be much, much busier and higher profile than he is. But, um, okay. Very good. There you go, Dan. Thank you. And again, everybody, another, another excuse to go over and see David's Warp Factor Trek interview. There's so much stuff going by. I can't keep Got my own stuff to build up that I can't get everybody. Uh, there you go. There's a a Trek movie. I know I know uh, Tony's been doing a lot with the guys. I feel bad that I haven't, so we'll try to do something now. I'm sorry that I've got two conventions this month while we're trying to build tours. I'm really sorry, everybody. To plop a <laughs> plop an event like this right in the middle of all that. Um I was not involved with it. I've heard about it. It's going away within another month or so. So if you're trying to get down and see it, um, it's been it's been reiterated and refreshed, but it's finally going away here in the next month or two. It's got a combination of things from the Paramount archives and from the Roddenberry archives. We were just talking about it uh, a day or two ago. At WonderCon, I believe. At WonderCon. And thank you for spreading this around all the channels. There you go. And sure thing, Dan, get that out there, everybody. Mm. And thank you for that recommendation, Dan. Yay. Uh, more stories about the preservers. Well, hang on. We've we're we got to discover them first, unless we're talking about further down the line. Um, That's interesting. So what you're saying is it Facebook blocked it, self-censored it. That's interesting. Well, good for them. They did something right then. Um, okay. Go, 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 go. Well, I think I may have thought it was God smacked at first too, but it's gobsmacked. There's no theological implication to it at all. Um... Okay, that would be the next weekend. So there you go. 
that will be rip roaring. Um, yeah, that would be a scene. That would be a scene. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, let's call the end of chat, everybody. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chicago is just big. Mm hmm. Whoosh, everybody. Thank you. Yep, it's midnight in Portugal. Wasn't that a song? It should be. I'm going to get on that plane to Lisbon. And here's your letters of transit. <laughs> I know. I, well, Chicago, not always. The lake effect. The lake effect. I know what that snow gone by tomorrow is. I from Oklahoma, remember? Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, everybody. Everybody, everybody. That is... Um, Yes, I'll have to get my phone call back. Everybody, thanks so much for joining us again. It's been another wonderful Tuesday. Wow. Uh, just real quick to remind you, if you're headed for Trek Vegas and you've got the day to spare on Trek Eve, on Con Eve, the day before things start on Wednesday, our Valley of Fire tour is happening with Geek Nation Tours. My partner, I will be with in Chicago this weekend with something else to announce. I can't wait to do that. And I'll tell you all about it next week. If you're not there and you don't see it online, geeknationtours.com is where you can find this. And after Saturday, the word about what we're doing next year. I almost hate to show this because I don't have a place for you to go, but I want you to know within the week, I'm going to get the page finished. August 20th and 21st, we will end the Gene Roddenberry centennial year since we couldn't kick it off with the Great Birds Origin Tour. It'll be two days around here with a group. However, however big our bus or our minivan needs to be, I can do it with as few as six people. We have a rate at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel right there in Historic Hollywood. It's a great rate. It's $100 off the regular and 50 off the promo rate. So there you go. If you're interested in this right now, let me know. Uh, you know, Get me on my socials. Um, you can say here, but I may not see it here in this chat. But we're going to let you. It's going to be exciting. Rod is in. We may add some other folks, too. Um to get back to the bones. And it'll be a warts and all. No no deification here, Gene. We call it like it is, okay? Um, otherwise, uh, Trek Files is also up. Thanks, guys. The Trek Files on Facebook and everything else. That's there. And want to thank our Patreons once again for helping out there, too. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for helping us expand our little streaming network. If you're curious... It's patreon.com slash Trekland Live. There you go. Five and ten bucks a month. I keep it simple. Thanks to everybody who's on with us. Uh, we just started another month. So plenty of time to jump in. And of course, on the Twitter, you can even tweet at me. And I will let you know about the Roddenberry Tour for right now. Uh, Larry Nimichek's Trekland. Where you are right now, please like and subscribe on YouTube, uh, Facebook. And that's our Instagram. And we're going to be doing a lot of living whether I'll be on Restream or just trying to keep it to Instagram or Facebook, we'll see. But I'll try to do some live streams from Chicago. We are at booth 1819, by the way. I finally got our booth number, if you're going to Chicago also. That's going to do it for us. Whoa. Happy first contact day, everybody. <laughs> so good to see you. We'll see you back here next Tuesday. Spread the word. Like and subscribe wherever you are especially YouTube. More news is coming. There'll be Star Trek news of, you know, TV show stuff. But we're going to have some news too, Terrace and I, next week. Uh, an old friend is returning, and I can't wait. It's been long overdue. Bigger and better, and it's what I've been working on crazy-like for the last couple of weeks. Can't wait to tell you all about it. And so until then, please, please stay healthy. Do all the things. Please stay woke. Check your sources, and if it's legit, Listen to what they have to say. And Trek well, everybody. <laughs>